Okay, this sermon's entitled, Redeemed by the Blood. Redeemed by the Blood of Jesus. Now, the reason I'm preaching this sermon is because, number one, it's just a very, very positive subject. It lets us know that our salvation rests in Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. And this doctrine is very important to, to preach on because there are people out there that do not agree with this. They think that salvation is up to them somehow and that they have to somehow prove their salvation by how they live or they have to somehow contribute to it or they, maybe they have to persevere to the end or they have to repent of their sins and they have to make Christ the Lord of their life and all this. This stuff is nonsense because salvation is based on what Jesus Christ has done for us. And now, the blood of Jesus that redeems us has made, it makes it very clear that nothing we do and can mess up our salvation because it's, it's an event that took place already. And the blood represents the fact that it's over with. When Jesus shed his blood, he did it for us. And we're redeemed by his blood. And, that, and I, like to, I like this subject because so many people don't actually understand this. And they think, well, I've heard people say, well, he shed his blood for us, but can you prove that, that that's what saves us? Yes, I can. Now, if we, if, we had to, if we could do something to mess this up, then Jesus Christ was either not the Savior or his blood meant nothing. But the Bible calls his blood precious. Let's go ahead and turn to um, 1 Peter. The blood that was shed for us, you know, was already shed. That means salvation's already accomplished. And this should give us total confidence in our salvation, total confidence in our Savior. He was good enough to shed his blood for us to pay for all our sins. Now, the thing is, his blood washes all our sins away per permanently. They're gone. Even, even the future sins that we haven't committed yet, are, are been, they've been washed away as well. The Bible says, Come now, let us reason together, say at the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they, be, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Your sins were as red, like I mean, as bad as they could be, red like crimson. Because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, they're washed as white as snow. In God's eyes, because of Jesus Christ and what he did for us at the cross, when he died, was buried, and rose again, all our sins were washed away with, with his, by his blood. And that's how God sees us forevermore white as snow. And this is, this is a Bible truth. So I'm going to preach on a few ver let me go over a few verses that make this clear. Being redeemed means you're already you've already been restored back to God. And I'm going to prove that. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 1. See, sermons should be good news. See, I, to, to a lost person, this is not good news. People hear grace being preached, that's not good news to them. You know, they, they don't want, I mean, to a, to a, to a let, me, let, me, let me back up, not to a lost person, to a self-righteous person, and they're lost, probably lost too, that this is like, this, this type of preaching is bad news to them, because it, it shuts their pride up. They want to they wanna try to work their way to heaven. They want to try to merit salvation. They want to think that you've got to live right to be saved, or that you can't live a certain way and be saved. See, they don't like this teaching. They don't like grace teaching. They hate it. They don't want to hear that we're, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing else. They don't want to hear Jesus paid it all. They don't want to hear just believe on him to be saved. They hate it. They hate it. And that's why they call it easy believism, because they're not saved. And because they don't want to be saved the Bible way. You know? I don't think these people that, that say easy believism and mock it, I don't think, I don't think half of them are saved. Uh, good night. I don't know. Now that, they, they might be, but I, I don't know, though. It doesn't make sense. It's like calling John. It's like saying John three sixteen is not enough to be saved or something. I mean, what the heck? Why would a saved person say that when that is the saving message in John three sixteen? So people are really they don't make a lot of sense out there. They're out there believing all sorts of weird stuff. Now, if you're a helpless sinner, this preaching is going to be music to your ears because it lets you know that hey, your salvation is accomplished, not by you, not by how you live, not by your reformation, not by your repentance, not by anything you do or don't do or fail to do, or can't do, or whatever, or can do. It's not based on any of that. It's based on what Jesus Christ has done. Jesus Christ paid it all. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. What do you think all this other stuff is? Corruptible things. What is repenting of sins? Corruptible things. What is baptism if you're trusting that to save you? It's a corruptible thing. 
Now, baptism is symbolic for what Jesus has done. When Jesus was, when it was on the cross, that's when the person stands there in, in the baptismal. When the person gets dunked under the water, it represents Jesus dying for your sins. When the person comes up again, it represents the, the resurrection. That's all baptism is. It's symbolic. Okay, what, but see, the, you're not saved or redeemed by corruptible things, but you're, you're redeemed by the precious blood of Christ, okay, a silver and gold from your vain conversation, re received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Now look at that. That means the salvation that's promised to all believers in Jesus was already established before the world began, and you can't mess that up. You can't mess salvation up. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make here. Now, we should be very, we should be glad that it's, it's based on this. So many people out there, it's, they're, not, they're not basing their salvation on this. They're basing it on them. And it's just, a, it's pathetic. I mean, it's, imagine, imagine these lordship people on, on Judgment Day. Imagine the lose-it crowd on Judgment Day. And imagine the people that say, Christ didn't die for everybody, and though when he did shed his blood for everybody, according to the Bible, imagine what they're going to be saying to God on Judgment Day. I, I don't even want to know. Well, no, God, uh, the blood wasn't enough. You, uh, 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 I had to repent of my sins. Oh, uh, no, wait, God, the blood, you shed your blood for me, but, but, but I lost it. Oh, you didn't shed your blood for everybody, you just died for the elect. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm not going to want to be you on Judgment Day if you hold to that garbage. Hey, no, I'm telling you right now, as, with God as my witness, with the Bible backing up everything I'm saying, Jesus Christ shed his blood for every single person who's ever lived, alive right now, and ever will live. Period. And you better believe that. You know, because if you, if he, if, why would he shed his blood for, for some and not others? That's, that's blasphemy. It's wicked. It makes God a respecter of persons. It makes God wicked as hell. And I don't, I don't believe in that junk. Yes, I said their God, the God of Calvinism, is wicked as hell. And it's from hell. The God of Arminianism, same place. And guess what? Lordships. Oh, I hate these doctrines. You know, I hate, I hate them with passion because it's a mockery of the blood. Okay? The Bible says, in whom we have. Now, you have to believe. You have to be a believer. We have, the believers, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Redemption through his blood. <clears throat> now, my thing is, why would you want these isms to be true? I, didn't, I wasn't even intending to preach on all these isms. But why would you want any one of these isms to be true? Lordship. Why would you want that to be true? Jesus Christ didn't die, didn't, make, didn't really pay anything? i got to add to it? N no, I'm sorry. Losing salvation? Why would somebody want that? That's the, that's the main thing we talk about that. Can you lose your salvation? No, you can't. And why would you want to? That's pathetic. And then why would you want Jesus Christ to have only died for some people? Sick. It's because you're sick, that's why. It's because you're warped in the head. And I'm not afraid to say it. Hey, by, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off and were lost, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. You know, that's what the Bible teaches. We're, we're redeemed by the blood. And the offer goes to everybody. But you know what? It only applies to those that have faith in Christ. Now, more verses on this. Okay, let's just turn over to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5 reads, in verse 9, it says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, to Jesus, was sl wast slain, and hast redeemed us, Redeemed us, believers, redeemed us to God. See that? Redeemed, and, we're, and we're, God has us completely. We're redeemed to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Those that are saved, they've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, period. And that is what the Bible teaches, so we need to be understanding this. So, a believer, a saved person doesn't have anything to worry about 
Now, just think about if you could lose your salvation. For, 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 what, what would that even mean? That the blood of Jesus Christ didn't accomplish anything. And that's blasphemy is all that is. So let, that's all I have. Dear, dear God, thank you, for, thank you for allowing us to understand what your word says on this subject. Jesus Christ shed his blood to save sinners. And we're redeemed by the blood. And it's, it's the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's good enough. I'm, 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 I'm satisfied with that. You know? And you're satisfied with it as well. That's why it says, He hath redeemed us to God by thy blood. So thank you for this promise. Keep us safe. And allow us to grow in grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.